Hi, it's Christina with the Sisyphean Journal, and as I'm checking through Lyme 5, um, one of the cases under heart failure is a woman marked up. Actually, she didn't give her a name, but I did on my um, Cemetery of Choice website. I called her Gloria, and her death was covered in some depth in the 1976 uh, CDC abortion surveillance summary. And if you follow the link below to Gloria's story, I link to both the CDC abortion surveillance summary and to uh, an image I made of the pages where they discuss Gloria's death so you don't have to go looking for it. So she was a 35 year old woman with six living children and a history of two miscarriages. Now in 1976, she went to her doctor due to nausea and abdominal pain. Her last period had been two weeks earlier. Uh, her doctor diagnosed her with either gastritis or a peptic ulcer and gave her antacids, and he also ordered x-rays, which showed no abnormalities. Well, two months later, Gloria was still feeling ill, so she returned to the doctor with symptoms of lethargy and morning sickness. And the doctor told her she was about 10 weeks pregnant. And as the CDC abortion surveillance summary put it, Gloria was counseled on the potential risk of her previous x-ray exposure to the fetus, and she elected to terminate her pregnancy. And if we look at how women get counseled after prenatal testing, I get the fact that uh, the counseling was pretty intensively um, aimed toward, um, you've screwed up your baby lady, you need to get rid of it. So Gloria was referred to a doctor for her abortion, but for some reason there was a four week delay before she went to his office. And he examined her, determined she was about 14 weeks pregnant, and the abortion was scheduled for 10 days later. By then, he estimated that she was 15 weeks pregnant. And this doctor used his routine approach to second trimester abortions, which was to inject prostaglandin into the amniotic fluid, amniotic fluid while the woman was in his office, and then later admit her into the hospital to go into labor and expel the baby. And it's the violence of the labor induced by prostaglandin that was typically sufficient to kill the, the fragile unborn child. In fact, the contractions were so strong that sometimes they caused the woman's uterus to tear open, sometimes they ca caused her cervix to rip off, and sometimes they decapitated the fetus. These contractions were so strong. Well, shortly after the prostaglandin was administered, Gloria began to experience nausea and vomiting and then became unresponsive and went into cardiorespiratory arrest. The doctor started CPR and had her transferred to the emergency room. On arrival, Gloria was comatose without any detectable pulse or blood pressure. So doctors intubated her and continued with resuscitation efforts. She was in ventricular fibrillation, which meant her heart was kind of going instead of having any kind of meaningful um, rhythm that would pump blood. So I'm sure they um, defibrillated her to get her into a normal cardiac rhythm. And after 90 minutes of um, working on her, they were able to restore normal heart, heart function. The next day, Gloria expelled the dead fetus. She was provided with intensive care and eventually transferred from the intensive care unit to a general hospital. She remained severely neurologically impaired, unable to resp she was able to respond to pain and to move her arms, but not her legs. She died five months after the prostaglandin injection without ever resuming any kind of neurological normalcy, leaving her six children with no mother. Her autopsy showed that she had suffered a pulmonary embolism, which triggered the cardiac arrest that deprived her brain of oxygen. Now, how the CDC reviewed this case is to me very telling. They faulted the doctor with not urging her to seek an immediate abortion at 10 weeks, but not with failing to reassure her that the x-rays likely had not caused any substantial harm to her baby. Then they faulted the abortionist for not doing an immediate dilation and extract um, evacuation abortion, you know, where you reach in with forceps and take the baby apart, instead of delaying 10 more days before doing the prostaglandin abortion. And they didn't seem to at all entertain the idea that Gloria might have been dragging her feet about this abortion because she wanted her baby and was only agreeing to the abortion after being counseled about the harm the x-ray might have done. Now, they do legitimately fault the abortion doctor for administering prostaglandin in his office rather than in a hospital where there would have been immediate access to the aggressive means of resuscitation that restored heart function um, rather than just doing CPR. Um, 
I just find it really interesting that, like I said, at no point did there seem to be concern about whether he was pushing her into an unwanted abortion. When she dragged her feet that long doing it, this didn't seem like something Gloria was really as enthused about as the CDC was.